This week, we're in northern Arizona on the muzzleloader hunt. We have just got done with the archery hunt. We had a great hunt with John Holzheater, and I'm anticipating another phenomenal hunt with Alan Ramsey, who's waited for over 20 years to draw his coveted elk tag. Welcome to elk camp. I'm Steve Chapel, and welcome to Elk Camp. Factors that have made me apply for this Unit 1 muzzleloader hunt is because I've taken some vacations up here previously, and uh, I just love the area, the country, it's so beautiful, and there's so many great elk walking around that uh, I pretty well decided that this is a spot that I, that I wanted to get a tag for eventually and hunt. So opening morning arrived and we were all really excited to take on a new hunt. So without missing a beat, we went out and went to that honey hole spot that we'd been hunting on the archery hunt where we were having a lot of success with John Holzheater. And for whatever reason that morning, it was just totally dead. Um, but luckily, as I was blowing calls, attempting to get something to bugle there in the dark, I heard um, three bulls bugle off to the northwest. First morning of the hunt was everything that I expected it to be. You come into these situations and you really don't know what you're going to encounter, and it didn't take us but 15 minutes to get into a bull elk being called in. As this uh, small six point left the scene, um, we decided since the bull to the north was bugling real hard that we would go take a look at him. We got tucked into a big cedar tree there in the shade. Um, I started cow calling, and this bull was uh, bugling really aggressively to the calls. He's frustrated. Yeah, I didn't want a cow, right? I mean, it's you know. Good, good thing I didn't have that out. I, exactly. <laughs> we'll guard you back. We won't let anybody sneak up behind you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was fun. Sure. 
Elk Camp with Steve Chappell is brought to you by Bergara Rifles. Our barrels make all the difference. Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls. We call the game. Zeiss Sports Optics. Confidence in the toughest conditions. And by Steve Chappell's Zero Hunt Fees. Experience Arizona elk hunting with zero hunt fees. This episode of Elk Camp is sponsored by Bergara Rifles. Our barrels make all the difference. So that evening hunt, we went back out there again with the success of the morning hunt. We thought we'd take a look out there again. All right, so we're back in here this afternoon where we hunted this morning or nearabouts. We had quite a few bulls being went in here this morning. That was exciting this morning. Yeah, so we're excited. We're hoping that they chime up here again this afternoon. A big storm on the way in, so I think maybe they'll be out and about and bugling in anticipation of that. But uh, we're going to go have some fun and find out. Okay, great. Okay. This time we pushed around to the north side of the big knoll and uh, as prime time came on we heard a bull bugling and he was one of those bulls that just you know makes you kind of wonder whether he's going to be a good bull or not so decided we'd go ahead and move in and get set up on him. And like so many bulls will do as we were set up, the wind was blowing a little bit from our left to our right. And as he was approaching, instead of coming into the open lane, he kind of skirted a little bit to our right. He had Real nice long beams, but again, just not a trophy bull, not something that we wanted to shoot that early in the hunt, but nonetheless, a good call in and a, a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. I'm glad I remembered to put a primer in, but oh, I didn't need to. Too. Wouldn't yeah. that have been something? He did that so quietly and so smoothly, he never even knew it. That was a nervous moment. Yeah. Hey guys, for this week's tip, I'm gonna demonstrate how I blow the call that I refer to as the estrus scream. Now this call is a very aggressive, kind of uh, growly sounding cow call that the cows make during the heat of the rut. And I'm gonna use my new Elk Camp mouth reed manufactured by Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls to demonstrate this sound. Now what I'm doing with the call in my mouth is I'm just activating my vocal cords as I blow on the call and you'll hear that in the call as I blow it like this. So you can tell that call has a lot more emotion, a lot more volume. It's very uh, gravelly and three-dimensional. The bulls will really react to that during the rut. That is a very effective call for you to use when nothing else will work out there in the elk woods. You can pick up this call at your local sporting goods dealer or off of my website. Best of luck on your hunt, and thanks for watching Elk Camp TV. This episode of Elk Camp is sponsored by Steve Chappell's Zero Hunt Fees. Experience Arizona elk hunting with zero hunt fees. This episode of Elk Camp is sponsored by Zeiss Sports Optics. Confidence in the toughest conditions. So a couple days later, I got up with a plan, but that plan quickly changed because from camp, I could hear lots of bugling right there from our campsite and it was a very rainy, foggy type morning, but hearing these big sound of bulls right out here by camp got me really intrigued. So uh, we used the fog in the low light and the terrain, there was kind of a little ridge line in between us and where they were bugling. Uh, the elk couldn't see us, we couldn't see them. Uh, we walked and walked and walked and got over to a tree line, uh, got set up where I thought would be the, the best place to be, right out on the edge 
and then as the fog started to clear just a little bit, all of a sudden the elk started to materialize and they were heading right our way. So as the first couple of elk approached, I was just thinking to myself, this is gonna be perfect because the wind was right, they were coming within muzzleloader range, they were even stopping to feed in kind of this little broken spot out there in the meadow uh, where the grass was a little greener and shorter, so it was looking really good for us. And the elk were filing by totally unaware of our presence until a cow, about the third elk of the bunch, I think, uh, came by, did the same thing, but for whatever reason, she decided to kind of wrap around behind us and go into the green timber, and when she did, I believe she winded us. And like all elk will do, instead of just leaving the scene, she had to go tattletale on us. was right as a nicer bull was coming into view and uh, she ran out there and you could tell right away he bugled up on top of the ridge line which was really pretty but you could tell it changed the pattern of where the elk were going to come into the timber and it pushed him out of range uh, so we had to move a little bit uh, to see him again I got the opportunity to glass out there and take a look. There was, uh, I guess, about four bulls out there. And I looked them over and I just, again, couldn't make any of them be the type of bull that we were after on the hunt. So it was a great morning hunting in the fog, just beautiful. Um, but again, had me a little concerned about whether we were gonna be able to find a trophy bull or not on the hunt. Morning in the fog. We had these elk out in the wide open out here so foggy that we were able to move through the wide open without them seeing us at all. They started filtering right over here, right by us. They're gonna come by about 200 yards. It's just the way it goes, because they were definitely gonna be coming right through yeah. this pass. They're coming right there, right here. Yeah. We we're gonna have about 190 to 200 yard shot, it was looking like, but they won again and we lost, so we can see if it doesn't rain us out. <laughs> we'll be out here one way or the other. Elk Camp with Steve Chappell is brought to you by Bergara Rifles, our barrels make all the difference. Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls, we call the game. Zeiss Sports Optics, confidence in the toughest conditions. And by Steve Chappell's Zero Hunt Fees. Experience Arizona elk hunting with zero hunt fees. This episode of Elk Camp is sponsored by Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls, we call the game. So on the morning of day seven, the final day of the hunt, as we always seem to do here at Elk Camp, we were taking it into the ninth inning. I had a plan to go out and hunt that pinion juniper country again, because I like to call in that country, and I was just very hopeful that we would be blessed with some bugling that morning. As it got to be just to where we could barely see to walk, we decided to cut the distance down, and that's what we did. We hiked in there pretty deep, um, got fairly close to the bugling, uh, found a, a spot where we could set up and have a, a good little view there for Alan, got him set up next to a tree. I started cow calling uh, again, and the bulls started ripping back at us, so we thought it was gonna get real intense there. But as we sat there, the younger bull continued to approach and got closer and closer. And uh, all of a sudden, we hear him right off to the right of us, and here he pops out at less than 10 yards.
So with this pretty young bull moving away, um, we had hopes that the bigger bull would come out in the little opening that we had below us, but he just skirted around the tree line with his cows and we didn't get a look at him. So we picked up and pursued. That big bull was right there and he crossed just on the other side of that tree line and he just barely out of view. He followed the cows. I thought he was going to come out in this opening right in front of us. Let's go get him. And as we were pursuing this bull with his cows, we heard another bull bugling. And he sounded pretty good too. So with the herd bull right there close by, I thought maybe I could create a little bit of jealousy. So we got ourselves into a, a, a broken spot with some real good uh, views there and we could hear the bull bugling in the timber off to the west of us. Got set up by a little bush. I started calling on the uh, matriarch call and that bull started screaming and approaching the call. So as this beautiful five point came by us, it was just amazing to watch him bugling on camera so many times. And uh, he actually went by us at you know 40 yards. There was a cow nearby. He got with her. But meanwhile, the herd bull was becoming more and more agitated as this bull came in to the calls. So right at that point, after this younger bull moved away with the cow, we decided it was time to try to move in and make contact with the herd bull again. So we took the opportunity right there with that chaos going on to pick up and move forward about 75 yards and it gave us an open lane where we could see the bull's cows moving through the lane as they were leaving and uh, right then I knew it was do or die time. And as the smoke cleared, we could see the bull going down. Nice work, Joe. <laughs> great, great job, man. That was a lot of fun. Man. That was amazing. And good for you for shooting offhand right there. I mean, it was just a little window. There was cows all around. We weren't going to get away with much more at all, especially since I'd been calling. It was a little bit too chicken to come fight me, but. <laughs> Kept him, kept him around nearby and got his He made a big mistake. He followed his cows awesome. and they, they let him right into the yep. trap. Awesome, Alex. Thank you, thank you. Awesome. Yes. The culmination to a hard seven days, man. It's, it's well, been, we've covered some country. Yeah, it's been hard finding mature bulls this year. Um, yeah, we'll take what God gives us today right it's here. Probably the last 15 minutes that they'd still be active on the last day, Absolutely, right? Absolutely, yeah. And because can, we got high wind coming in this afternoon. Yeah. This was probably the end of the hunt right I here. I totally agree, Alan. Yeah. Well, Alan. An incredible morning Thanks here so at Elk much, Camp. Steve. Yeah, this was a great, great hunt, great adventure. Everything that I thought it would be, that's for sure. But uh, this is what you come for, you know, as yeah. an experience like this. I feel really blessed this morning to take a bull like this with you. And man, I just want to compliment you on how you took that offhand shot right there in the heat of the moment, took it down to the seventh day. And I, I guess that's how we roll here at Elk Camp. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was an incredibly fulfilling moment to take that great bull on the last morning of the hunt with Alan Ramsey, who had waited more than 20 years to draw this special tag. 
You know, I can only hope that Alan might draw a random tag here in the near future and we can get to experience a hunt like this again together. But if not, I think it'll still go down for both of us as one of the most memorable epic elk hunts that we've ever shared here in Northern Arizona. Hunting with Steve was the ultimate uh, experience for somebody that wants to go on a hunt and have elk bugled and have them respond to calls. Uh, he knew this area extremely well. We hunted all aspects of the unit from low country to high country and uh, I was very impressed with his knowledge of the unit and the animals that lived here and uh, he tried hard every day. He always kept a great demeanor about the hunt. He kept me encouraged. He calmed me down when I got nervous, which I was. And so um, I'd highly recommend anybody that wants to go on a bugle elk hunt for trophy elk to, uh, to employ Steve Chapel. It was a great experience. You know, the elk hunting in Northern Arizona really is as incredible as you see here on Elk Camp TV. And if you would like to experience an elk hunt like this, you know, finances no longer have to stand in your way of going on a great guided elk hunt. So if you'd like to experience an elk hunt like the one that you just saw with me and Alan Ramsey, log on to ZeroHuntFees.com and see how that can be possible for you.